The Von der Glow brace is single-handed, non-stop, unassisted around the world. Solo ocean racing, in my opinion, is the toughest form of sailing that you could possibly do. It's just kind of, just the extreme of the extreme of the extreme. You know, to, to manage a 60 foot boat with 600 square meters of sail on your own, in the middle of an ocean, in all weathers, I mean, that is, it's a, Phenomenal feat for any human being. Oh my word, this is this is really hard work. I think I'm just so run down. And then I know that in 12 hours this deck will be awash with water. The boat will be flying along. I'm here right now, bailing out water. I still have the same feeling about the ocean as I did when I was a kid. It represents opportunity and freedom. I've been on and around boats since I was a baby, really. We've got a photo, of, a family photo of me, aged one, on a boat. In my late teens, I started reading a lot of books about the ocean racing that was going on then. I came across the Vendée Globe race and in these races, they were doing the same thing as the Whitbread. They were sailing the same size boats round the world, but single-handed. And women were doing it too, and no one was questioning it. No one, you know, it just seemed completely normal. They were talking about women in the same way. The women were competing on equal terms, and it just absolutely grabbed me. And, and at the age of 17, I just kind of thought, I'm gonna do that. We all race boats that are 60 foot long, uh, masts up to 30 meters high. Uh, we start in Les Sables in France, and the course is uh, the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa to port. Um, Cape Lewin, which is the southwestern corner of Australia, that's to port, and then Cape Horn to port. It was really, really foggy, really foggy at the start, so they had to delay it for two hours. And then the fog lifted really quickly and the race committee made the decision to let us go. That was it, it within minutes, um, all, all my team who were on the boat with me had just gone and, and I was heading for the start line and, and then, you know, all the emotion of the moment really hit me. And already at that moment, you know, I felt like I'd won because I'd achieved what so, so, so many people never get to do. Just to start the race. 24 hours in. <laughs> what am I gonna say? I mean, it feels like home. As athletes, we are competing 24 hours a day for three months. The whole sky is glowing and the sea is glowing. Wow. I noticed after the front went through that um, a couple of the elastic tie backs on the second set of spreaders had broken. Uh, and um, so I've decided now it's probably the best chance I'm going to have to go up the mast and fix them. Uh, I'm more than a little afraid because I hate doing this, but the conditions are just about perfect. I've got all my kit together. I'm going to be climbing using this, which basically belays me as I climb. I have this, which is a hand ascender and a foot loop, and of course, my helmet. So, this broke. 
here. It's quite nice conditions. I thought I'd give it a go. I'm up. Coming down is going to be scary. Just need to do the job. Ugh. Look at this. Look at all that horizon. Isn't it beautiful? Amazing and beautiful. If I was in the shades, I'd appreciate it a lot more. Oh boy. Sleep is, is a constant factor in your decision making because we can only sleep for around 20 to 30 minutes at a time because the boats are just moving all the time. I've got stability now for a bit so I'm going to have something to eat and then sleep, sleep, oh sleep. I guess it's like being on a runaway train. You know, the train is just going all the time. It never stops. There's this constant motion and power and noise and all of this distraction going on around you. Um, and you have to find strategic times to sleep. Oh, it's all feeling a little bit relentless at the moment. Uh, the trade winds are really pumping. We've got between 25 and 30 knots, but they're quite unstable. So the breeze is up and down and up and down. I was uh, about three quarters of the way through the Southern Ocean. So the hardest part of the track really where the worst weather is and it's coldest. And also you're the furthest away from any help at all. And I'd actually just sailed through uh, a point um, called Point Nemo, which is the most remote place on the planet. So at Point Nemo, you're closer to the International Space Station than you are to a continental landmass. Um, and I just sailed through there and was going better than I could have ever imagined. I was 15th out of 33 in the second oldest boat in the fleet. You know, I was just coursing with energy the whole time. Um, and I noticed um, that one of my rudders had dropped slightly, at which point I sent a message to Joff, my technical director, and there was this very long delay in him coming back to me. And I think then, you know, I started to just have this, this feeling that maybe something wasn't right. It's not good news on Medallia today afternoon um, see here got my sails down and I'm waddling along because uh, about two hours ago just in a routine check of the boat I discovered that the port rudder stock was cracked and um, I'm not far off losing the rudder from the port side and it was devastating. It was so unbelievably devastating. There is no other option than sort it out. You cannot call for help because there is no help there. I thought I could see an opportunity if I stayed exactly where I was. Um, I thought I could see a 12 hour window where the wind was going to drop before the next big storm came through. Um, and I decided that I would take my chances and, and look for an opportunity then. I don't know if you can see these clouds here. So that's another 30 knotter that's coming through tonight. I'm <laughs> so gutted because it's actually 30 knots slightly from the south. So I was going to jibe <laughs> onto starboard and ride that along the AZ. <laughs> Not anymore, but we'll do it at the best time for ultimate success. And when it's done, I'll be back in the game. I mean, the worst thing that could have happened probably, and I did think about this, was at, at one stage, I had the old rudder out, and the only way you can get the new rudder to come in through the bottom of the boat is to throw it over the side. Um, and I can tell you, I checked my knots many times because <laughs> just imagine just chucking your new rudder <laughs> over the side and it drifting away. That <laughs> a week ago, um, when I was looking at the route to Cape Horn, 
uh, I said that I thought this last week in the Southern Ocean was probably going to be the toughest week in my race and hopefully I didn't bring that on myself but <laughs> it, it really really has been um, and you know even aside from the rudder change uh, it, it's difficult sailing at the moment it's difficult conditions today super squally and in the squalls we had horizontal snow Cape Horn I'm really struggling for words it, it's so amazing to see it I've had such an awful day and I'm just looking at it and I just think I want this to be in my mind I want it to be burned into my memory for the rest of my life I can't believe I'm here I'm so proud I'm so happy to be here it's magnificent I had a best moment every day on the race. When you're sailing the boat well, it's kind of absorbed into the environment and, and the edges are blurred. You know, you become part of this equation, which is weather, water, boat, me. You know, there's this, this blend of, of euphoria and excitement and terror uh, that is just, it's something else. I've never felt that feeling anywhere else in the world. within a, a mile of the line and, and and all the support boats came out to join me and and I kind of thought oh well I, I better go and stand on the deck and wave at them because that's what people expect of me and I went and did it and and then I kind of went hey <laughs> I'm about to finish the Wanda Globe race and then it really did you know really did take me then and and it was incredible absolutely incredible that i had achieved that and i was the eighth woman in the whole world to ever achieve that yeah it was amazing it's the best three months of my life you know it's seldom that these dreams live up to reality um reality lives up to your dreams yeah that doesn't often happen but for me, it was it was even better than I ever thought it would be. I stepped off that boat absolutely, concretely, 100% saying, I will do 2024.